Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for CreativeCow.net. Before I get into this tutorial, I want to mention that this is both a video podcast and an article at Creative Cow. So when I refer to certain project files, I'm talking about the ones that can be found at the article site, which will be at the CreativeCow.net website. You don't need the files to learn any of what I'm covering, but it will save you time if you want to jump right into the lesson. Today I want to talk about lip syncing for character animation in After Effects. I'm not talking about open or closed mouths, that's simple enough to do. I'm talking about phonemes, that is, the different mouth shapes a person forms when making the various sounds used in a spoken language. Now I've seen a lot of people do it in a lot of different ways. Some were really elegant and some involved using a different layer for every time the mouth changed, meaning hundreds or thousands of layers for just a few sentences. Not a good way to do it. I'm going to share a method of lip syncing so simple and so effective that if you're already doing this sort of animation, you'll be amazed you were able to get along without it up until now. And for those of you that haven't done anything like this before, there's no time like the present to add a few new skills into your bag of tricks, right? This will involve two major components, nesting compositions and time remapping. If you already know about both of these things, well great, you're ahead of the game. If not, don't worry because everything's going to be explained. If you're going to be doing this from scratch, you'll need to build a character face with the different mouth shapes for different phonemes. I provide an example of this in my file, Mr. Face. Yeah, I know it's original, what do you want? But basically, you'll need to have a mouth for each phoneme, and in this case, I'm using seven basic phonemes that I think will cover me more or less, plus one mouth for no sound, which I'm going to call rest. It's also really important to set up the mouths in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever program you're doing it in as separate layers from the rest of the face and to make sure that they're lined up properly over each other so that when we switch from mouth to mouth it looks like a talking mouth and not just different mouth images in different places on the screen, right? Okay, so in After Effects, let's import the face file. Go to File, Import, File. And in the dialog, navigate to the face file. Now, this is pretty crucial. Under the Import As section, make sure to choose Composition Crop Layers from the pull-down. Instead of just importing it as a flat picture, this will tell After Effects to import the Illustrator file as an After Effects composition, with each Illustrator layer being given its own After Effects layer. Also, it makes each layer have its own dimensions, as opposed to the document's dimensions, but that's not really important for this tutorial. I just wanted to mention that. Anyway, with that option selected, click Open. Okay, so a new composition has been created. Let's get this set up. In the project window, double click on the composition to open it, and as you can see, it's looking a bit weird with all of the mouth shapes on top of each other. Don't worry, we'll take care of all of that in the next few steps. But before I get to that, I have a bunch of layers here, including some blinks, which I'm not going to work with right now. So why don't I just make those layers invisible by clicking on their eyeball switch? Also, I can temporarily hide these layers by making them shy layers. To do that, click on the layer's shy switch. That's the little switch that's like a face. When you press it, uh, the face kind of hides. And then after that, activate the composition's hide shy layers button here at the top of the timeline. Again, it's a button that looks like a little face. It corresponds with our little hide shy layers switch. Good. They're gone. Don't panic. You can always bring back those layers by clicking on the composition's shy button again. Okay, next let's pre-compose these mouth shapes, meaning let's take all of the mouth shape layers and move them into a new composition which will be nested here in this composition as a single layer instead of, you know, these eight layers that we have right now. Select all of the mouth shapes and then choose Layer, Pre-Compose. A pre-compose dialog pops up. I'm going to set the name of the composition to mouth. Now, I don't have an option as far as the layer attributes are concerned. You can see that one of the two options is grayed out, so I'll just use what they've given me. And I'll also make sure that the Open New Composition option is checked, and then I'll hit OK. If you didn't check Open New Composition, don't worry. You can always double click on the composition in the project window to open it up. OK, now let's get organized. For this whole thing to work, I'll need to have a different mouth visible on each frame in the timeline, so I need to make each mouse length one frame long in time. To do that, I'll move to the first frame in the timeline and then select all of the layers. Next, I'll hit Alt and the Close Bracket button on my keyboard. You know, that's the button directly to the left of the backslash on your keyboard. This will trim the layer to a length of only one frame. Perfect. 
Next, let's put these layers in order so that there's a different mouth on each frame lasting only one frame. Now I could do this by hand, but why would I when I can use the handy keyframe assistant made just for this purpose? With the layers still selected, choose Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Sequence Layers. From the dialog, just make sure that the overlap option is not checked here. That's a great tool for creating crossfades between layers, but we don't need it. Click OK to sequence the layers. OK, so now my layers are lined up and sequenced really nicely. Just to clean things up a little, I'll set my mouth composition to have only 8 frames so that there's not a lot of this empty space at the end here. It's not necessary, but I prefer to work as cleanly as possible. To do that, just move to the last frame, that's frame 7 by the way, because the first of our 8 frames is 0 and then hit N to trim the work area to this point in time. Now just choose Composition, Trim Comp to Work Area. OK, let's jump back into the main composition and see what we have. As you can see, my mouth composition is here, nested as a single layer, instead of eight separate mouth layers. If I scroll through time, I can see each mouth has its own frame. If I do a RAM preview, I can see that the mouths play like a movie with each frame being a different mouth until they run out at frame 8. What I want to do here is set up the nested mouth composition so that I can quickly tell After Effects to use a particular mouth for a particular sound I may hear in my audio track. Also, I want it to hold that mouth shape until the next one I call up. To do this, I need to select the mouth layer and then choose Layer Enable Time Remapping. That's the command right here near the bottom of the layer menu. This time remapping feature will allow me to control how a layer plays in time. Now, you can use this feature to make footage or a nested composition play faster, slower, or even backwards, but that falls outside the scope of this tutorial. What I'm going to use it for is to set up a system where I can tell After Effects to display different frames in the nested mouth composition with just a click or two. It may sound complicated, but it's actually really simple once you understand what time remapping does and how it works. As you can see, when I used the Enable Time Remapping command, After Effects created two separate keyframes for the time remapping property, one at the beginning of the layer and one at the end. The first keyframe represents our first frame of the mouth composition, and our last keyframe represents the last frame of the mouth composition. Well, technically it represents the frame after the last frame, and that's because when you're dealing with interlaced footage you want that extra half of a frame, but in our case we don't have to worry about that. So what's the point of these two keyframes? Well think about it this way. Time remapping is a layer property that looks at footage assigning a numerical value for each frame. In other words, each frame in footage or composition has a value. Frame 0 has a time remapping value of 0. Frame 1 has a time remapping value of 1. Frame 2 has a time remapping value of 2. And so on and so forth. By adding keyframes to this property, time remapping allows me to control my footage in such a way that, for example, I might say here at frame 5 of this example composition, show me frame 10 from the footage, and here at frame 50, show me frame number 300 from the footage. And since After Effects interpolates between keyframe values, the footage will play at different speeds or even backwards depending on how I set up my time remapping keyframes. Anyway, I could go on about time remapping till the end of time, but if you really want to know more about it, check out your After Effects help files for more information. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so what I was getting at there was that by putting a different mouth at each frame of a nested composition, and then time remapping that composition, we can call up a different mouth by just typing in a number, the number that corresponds to a particular mouth's frame. So for example, I could say, hey, show me the mouth for the oo sound, which is frame 7, by typing in a value of 7 here into the time remapping property. Voila! There's the oo mouth. The one issue we need to take care of is that we want After Effects to hold the mouth shape frame we chose until we call up another mouth frame. Otherwise, the mouths will just play like a movie as they did before. We need to delete any time remapping keyframes we have here except the first one and then convert that first keyframe into a hold keyframe. Now a hold keyframe holds the current value until the next keyframe and then changes instantly to the new keyframe's value. So if we were using a hold keyframe for two position keyframes, the layer would jump from position A to position B with no interpolation between the two positions. In our case, we aren't dealing with position, we're dealing with time remapping, but it's the same concept with regard to hold keyframes. Since a hold keyframe holds the current value until it gets to a new keyframe, we'll use it to hold a time remapped mouth frame until our next keyed value, which will be a new mouth shape frame.
To get the whole process started, right click on the keyframe and from the pop-up choose Toggle Hold Keyframe. As you can see, the diamond shaped keyframe changes into a boxy looking keyframe, indicating that it's a hold keyframe. Now, every keyframe that we create after this will be created as a hold keyframe. So if I move a little further in time and call up frame 4 for the ah sound, as you can see, it's a boxy shaped hold keyframe. You may notice that there's a difference in the way the first keyframe looks compared to the rest of the hold keyframes that follow. Good eye if you did. I'm not getting into why that is right now, but you'll find that every keyframe you convert into a hold keyframe will look different from keyframes actually created as hold keyframes. It's unimportant for now, but I didn't want to leave you wondering if you were doing something wrong. Okay, so now we need some audio to work with. I've already imported the QuickTime audio file called Triangle, which is going to be the voiceover that we'll be using in our lip sync. I'll drop that into the composition. My comp isn't the right length for this audio, but I can always adjust that in the composition settings later. Let's not worry about that right now. Before we continue, I should mention that it's pretty helpful to make a cheat sheet of all the mouths and their corresponding frame numbers to have handy. You can just put it up on the wall next to you or wherever you can glance at it quickly for reference. Okay, back to After Effects. Select the audio layer and hit LL on your keyboard. That's the L key twice in quick succession. This opens up the waveform so that I can see the audio more visually. Okay, so my audio starts at around frame 21. Let's listen to the audio first by hitting the period on the number pad. Hey gang, who can tell me what shape has three sides? It's right, a triangle. Okay, now that we know what he says, we have to work on a frame by frame level, listening to a frame's individual sound. To hear the audio as you scrub, hold down the control key, or if you're on a Macintosh, the command key, and drag the time marker across the timeline. Okay, so you can hear it being dragged. Now. What I want to do is first just get rid of this keyframe there. And let's start off with, so it's hey. So let's see, hey would be, the, the H sound would be probably close to number two, which is just a slight opening of the mouth. And by the time we move here, he's saying A, which is pretty close to the ah sound. So I'm going to do that, the hey. And he's kind of saying gang. So let's bring that back to two for the G sound, the G and back to the four for the ah, hey gang, and back to two, and then over here there's no sound, so let's rest that using the zero, the first one. I want to point out that I try not to use more than one keyframe every two or three frames or it starts to look weird. You can separate them more than that, but if you have one keyframe at every frame, it changes too quickly to be seen properly. Now I'm just going to jump ahead here and show you a completed version of this face animation. You'll notice that I have eye blinks in here and I set them up the same way I did the lips. Three different eye blink frames which were then time remapped. I use the eye blinks to punctuate certain words and make it look more random and alive. How you use them is up to you. Finally, if I nest Mr. Face here in my final composition as I've done, I can animate his position, scale, and rotation and I only have to animate one layer instead of all of the elements that make up Mr. Face. It's just a much simpler way of working. So here's what the final looks like. Hey gang, who can tell me what shape has three sides? It's right, a triangle. You're so smart. Anyway, I hope this helps you get your characters talking and gives you a few ideas. For creativecow.net, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz.